I'm Southern California Sustainable Chef, and today we're making ratatouille. Ratatouille is a blend of summer vegetables. Uh, depending on where you go in the United States, or in the country, or in the world, preparations of ratatouille are known to be different. Uh, you can go to France and it might be made as a casserole. You might go to Julian, where we're at, and we do it as a sauteed vegetable blend. You might go to LA and go to something completely different. My definition of ratatouille here at Jeremy's on the Hill is freshly prepared and freshly sauteed summer vegetables that come right from the garden. There is no set recipe for ratatouille. You go visit your farmer, you see what vegetables he has, you bring them home and you cook the ingredients the way that they need to be cooked to add just a light flavor and to lightly cook them. You don't want to overcook them, otherwise you're losing all your nutrients. Today's ingredients are as follows. We have rainbow chard stems, we have miner's lettuce, which is traditionally a weed, very tasty and delicious, it almost has like an aloe vera taste to it. More miner's lettuce, poblano peppers, dragon beans, fresh basil, more miner's lettuce, corn, spicy peppers, green onions, watermelon radish, carrot, heirloom tomato, globe eggplant, and a red onion. We're gonna take our carrot, what we wanna do, I've already pre-peeled it, what we're gonna do is you wanna peel the outside layer of skin off. What that's gonna do is add a more pure flavor to what you're eating. From there, Cut about a two inch spear, cut it into nice thin strips. Stay off of that, we just got three strips. That'll help you uh, figure out how to cut the product. The cut that we're gonna do right now is called a julienne. From there, we're gonna go cube. Rainbow chard stems, we're just gonna do a small dice as well. Watermelon radish. Look how bright that is, it's beautiful. Anytime you cut an onion, always peel off that first layer of membrane and that first layer of skin. Using heirloom tomatoes for this right here. Um, heirlooms are um, they're pretty amazing. Uh, you go to the grocery store and you get a tomato. Um, most of the time they're gas green and then they're just dyed red. The heirloom tomato is usually sourced locally and has a much more sweeter, juicier flavor. Um, these tomatoes that we have are some of my favorites. Um, yeah, they're great. So you'll notice that when I'm cutting everything, I'm keeping everything separate. They all have different cooking times. This will do is this will allow me to add the ingredient as I need to add it. When you shave corn, uh, it's really important to keep it in a bowl. There's two things you can do. If you don't want to use a bowl, uh, you can just cut the stalk in half and then you can shave it. The thing is with corn, and as you cut it and it comes off the, uh, the cob, it goes everywhere. So what we do is we use a bowl, 
so it has a place to fall without making a big mess. Another tip for you to take home with you is always heat your pan before you put your vegetables in. 30 seconds to a minute is roughly a good idea. I usually go by uh, when I add the oil to the pan and it starts gliding around really easily, then I add my vegetables to it. You want to make sure you hear that hot sear as you place the vegetables in your pan. Otherwise, you're just cooking vegetables. There's no sauteing going on. The definition of saute is little oil high heat. That does it keeps your vitamins and your nutrients still inside of your vegetables while allowing you to get that texture and that really delicious flavor that you're going after. So you're gonna notice that I didn't use everything that I had on the cutting board. What I'm gonna do is instead of throwing it away, you have two options. You have more than two, but the two options that I like are one, compost pile. Start setting all your vegetables aside. Go to make your own compost pile. Check out some of our other videos online to uh, learn how to make your own compost pile. The other option is, is you can make a very potent vegetable stock. Take all your leftover vegetables, Put it inside of a big pot with water, just enough to cover the vegetables, maybe plus two or three inches, and then uh, slowly cook it for about 30 to 45 minutes. Taste your new vegetable infused water and use that when you're making a soup or when you're cooking your quinoa, or as an alternative to anything baking or cooking wise, you would add water to it. For cooking around tattooing or any vegetables or anything on the stove, there's a couple different vehicles you can use. By vehicle, I mean oil to cook your vegetables in. Uh, olive oil is a good one, butter is a great one. Today we're going to use bacon fat. Uh, bacon fat has a bad rap. A lot of people think of it as um, this really hearty, disgusting fat that you put into your body and is really unhealthy for you. The truth is about fat from an animal is your body knows what it is and can break it down and recognize it versus something that's processed. Um, canola oils, uh, grapeseed oils are a good alternative, but can canola in particular is so readily available that everybody has it at their house. Stay away from canola, and if you can, try to use bacon fat. Not only will it be healthier for your body, but you'll taste the difference too. We're not gonna add too much. Notice, notice how, how the fat breaks down. It's exactly what we're looking for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our vegetables a couple layers at a time. We have our onion. Everybody likes a nice caramelized onion. The other thing we're gonna add at the same time is our carrots. All the pork fat with the onions and the carrots already. That's what we're looking for. Now what's important about this is you gotta understand that this is only gonna take a couple minutes. We're not gonna add everything over like a 10 minute period. It's that little 30 seconds here and there that really makes a difference. There's a couple reasons how I know when I'm ready to add my next step, which is gonna be eggplant and bell peppers. One is the way it smells, and two the way it looks. Uh, before it turns translucent, your vegetables will start to color. Once they start to color and it perfumes the air, that's when you add your next set of vegetables. We're going to go eggplant and peppers. So notice the ratatouille is starting to form. Blend the vegetables, but also look at the color. We're not even a quarter of the way done. <laughs> Another thing to observe is to notice, excluding carrots, all the bright colored vegetables are still left on the cutting board. Something else to take into consideration is that if you add those, you're gonna lose the color. So you really uh, wanna know that you add the more colorful vegetables to the end of a sauteing experience than you do at the beginning. Okay. What I'm going off of now is I'm looking at my eggplant. Nobody likes a sticky, soggy eggplant. What's great about this technique is eggplant and mushrooms will soak up all the moisture and then they're gonna spit it out. So they're just about to spit it out. Now I'm gonna add my next set of vegetables. We're gonna go radish and corn. Now we're gonna add our tomatoes, our charred stems, and our green onion. From here I'm gonna strip off some basil. Basil really makes this dish. That's one of the secrets to my ratatouille. Basil. So we haven't added any seasonings yet. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of salt. And we're gonna skip the nutmeg. We're gonna go salt, white pepper, 
and some lemon pepper. If you don't have lemon pepper at home, just go ahead and use the lemon or use the lemon zest. It's no big deal. 